I'm a sprinter and played American football, so I'm not an endurance athlete by any means. The military, however, makes me run a time 3,200 meters. I can go the distance, but I have trouble shaving time off. What are some of the strategies, exercises, and or training that would help? You're in the military. I've lived in Exeter. Semper Fi, brother. Semper Fi. I don't really know what that means. Just had a teabag sale on prison break. Now, taking all things as being equal, which means that your biomech is squeaky clean, then your aerobic capacity is one area that does improve with work done. Now, there are many different ways to do that work, but this is the quickest way that I've come across to increase your aerobic capacity. Now, this is an area that I do know a little bit about, but I've got to state, there is not just one way, there is no right way, I don't even think there's a best way. Now, I don't really know about this firsthand because, well, I'm a sprinter and a jumper. This comes from my cousin, John Littleman, and his experience. But if it was me, I don't know if I'd put all my chips in his butty. But this is what worked for him. I'm sure that there are other conflicting and just as good of methods. Anyway, I've asked John to give you his story. Ah, well, this happened after a season where I had a bit of a tussle with the sand bit. See, I've been jumping about a metre further than everybody else in the competition, and the rakers like a voluntary group, like a UK organisation that roamed the countryside raking, I've got to rake my area of the pit. That's what happens when you get these volunteers being used by these meetings. Anyway, I'm flying through the air, <whistles> bang, into the pit, and there's a bit of an argy-bargy with my ankle ligaments, the Achilles, and the sand. And the sand won. Anyway, went down doctors, and he said, no more jumping for you, lad, you're done. I try to remember that it was back in the noughties when medical science wasn't particularly advanced, so I'm told. So long story short, the months of limping about aimlessly, deeply depressed, I was down the local Oxfam and found a copy of It's Not About the Bike by that boy Armstrong. Gave the book a read, I thought I'd give cycling a go. Now even though I used to be a bit of a sprinter too, I always had an ability to do that endurance. Quick two, three miles, right back from being a nipper. Yes, yeah, sorry John. Um, and that's why I don't subscribe so firmly to the fast twitch, slow twitch fibre idea. But to be fair, that, that is a different video. Yeah. But if the truth be told, I never really liked the endurance. Yeah, sorry to interrupt again, John. Yeah, I just wanted to say, there is a difference and a vital difference between endurance running and endurance cycling. Basically, cycling permits you to train any hour of the day or night and pretty much every single day of the year. And even if you're biomechanically suspicious, it allows you to get the vast amounts of work done so that you can make these enormous improvements really without being hampered by the injuries. And that is a massively important consideration to take into account when you're training the aerobic capacity. Okay, back to you, John. But even though I didn't like it, I looked in the aerobic system like the engine of a Morris Minor 900 cc's. I thought to myself, if I could improve my top end capacity to like 1.3 litres, I'd be able to cruise easy down the skippy trunk road. So I researched ways to do it. And guess what came up in the Google search? Intervals. Ouch. Uh, intervals. Oh, and before the 0.017% uh, of the people who watch my Hit the Lit, Why This Is A Lie video start leaping around the room, doing laps of honour and saying, yes, we were right, Calm yourself down, sit back down, and let's be very, very clear. Aerobic intervals are not the same as HIT intervals. Now HIT tends to refer to anaerobic intervals. These tend to be 15 seconds through to around about 60 seconds worth of effort. They're all conducted at a very, very high percentage of your maximum capacity. So if your best is, uh, I don't know, let's just use arbitrary units, 100 BGs. <laughs> then these will be conducted at 85 to 100% of that BG unit. See, basically, you're booking it. Aerobic intervals are from three minutes onwards, and because of that time, you're going to be working at a lower percentage of your maximum effort. 
So that means that if your best is still 100 Bee Gees, you'll be doing these efforts because of the time at around about 50 Bee Gees. Can you come to me on a summer However, this is where it gets a little bit complicated, especially with the wording. The 50% effort Can you come to me? still ends up feeling like the 100% Can I because you're at a high percentage of your aerobic capacity. So basically, you still feel like you're gassing it. And that's why I think that it becomes difficult when you're talking about high intensity training, because you can have high intensity anaerobic training, and you can have high intensity aerobic training. And the figures are different, but they feel the same. But now the other factor that you've got to bear in mind here is that cycling is much closer to weights than running is, because you can directly measure the output. You do that using something called a power meter, and that provides an enormous advantage in aerobic training. You can basically have a stadium track or a 150 mile road in your kitchen called a turbo trainer that folds up and goes in a cupboard. Sorry John, uh, let me hand it back to you. Now I started off with a VO2 max of mid 50s, pretty reasonable for an anaerobic athlete. Then I started doing the VO2 max training. I did three, four and five minute intervals, 77 to 82 percent of MAP which is maximal aerobic power, dialed it in with the wattage, and here the numbers really counted. I also took a hard look at the recovery ratios. So I started with a 1 to 2 ratio, then after a while I went down to a 1 to 1, and then for some of the shorter sessions I even did a 2 to 1. Sorry John, I'm just going to explain that. Okay, yeah, so with that ratio idea, what he's saying is if he did double recovery, then if he does a 3 minute interval, then he gets 6 minutes off. If he does equal recovery and does a three minute interval, he gets three minutes off. If he does half recovery, then he does a three minute interval, he gets a minute and a half off before he starts the next interval. Right you are, so I just cycle that through two sessions a week, every week for about six months. Went back, got my VO2 max tested again, with all that apparatus, my score had risen to 71. Obviously it worked for me. Oh thanks John. That's a hell of a story. Okay, so you can see here that John did it with cycling. But the problem when you're doing it with running is that you're using time as a proxy. And there are a lot of different variables that can affect time, as well as the biomechanical strain on running is far higher, and therefore likelihood of injury is far greater. And there's another issue as well, which is that VO2 max training appears to be event specific. So you can massively boost your VO2 max capacity in one arena, like cycling, but that doesn't necessarily translate very well to another arena, like running. And really, I can't speak with conviction on improving VO2 max through running because, well, I've never done it, and obviously John's never done it either. Well, well I have dabbled in it. Uh, John's never done that. But... I would assume that it's a similar principle. Well, well, well uh, I think it can be done on a track, but you probably have to measure how far you went in the three minute interval, mark that, and then each time you're trying to hit that same level or maybe a meter or two further. Now beyond the other environmental reasons, there is another reason why it's really just not as simple to do it when you're running as when you're cycling. In cycling, you can literally dial in and look for what is a 10 watt improvement in each rep in each session. Basically, 10 watts is an imperceptible change to you when you're doing it. Now, even though you don't recognize it mentally, your body absolutely absorbs it and will adapt to it physiologically. And so each time you go through the session, your body will grow by 10 watts. And that's why I say that it's actually very much like doing weights. For example, if you just add one kilo to your lifts, your brain doesn't really recognize that one kilo improvement. You do that five times, and now you've got a five kilo PB. Now, if you wanted to get as close as possible to that aerobic capacity building effect in something akin to the running style, you might want to consider a treadmill. Well, actually, that's what I did. But treadmills do change the gait pattern. But an even bigger but is that it gives you the capacity to just change the speed by 0.1 kilometers or miles, and then you can just build that aerobic capacity all the time. 
We know the two buts equal a positive. But, depending on how fit you are, you might need to find a faster one. Of course, you can use the ramp incline on a treadmill, but after around about 4%, it significantly changes the biomechanics of running and therefore makes it less effective. Well, actually, that's what I did. Went on the internet, online calculator, checked predicted speed against given incline. How did you, John? Seems like you did it all. Worked out the predicted speed at a given incline, and then worked out the percentage of that speed, and ran that for three minutes. Well, it's not impossible. It can be done. You've just got to go online. And just so you know, if you run at low speed, you'll get a bit of a boost, if you're a newcomer, because of capillarization. Whoa, oh, oh, whoa, whoa, just, uh, yeah, just easy, John, there. Uh, it's a different video. Just leave the uh, sciencey type stuff to me. Right you are, kind of jump in your grave, talk about that at another time. Well, basically, the aerobic capacity changes with this type of maximal work, but anyone who's got any type of significant endurance background isn't going to get a lot of benefit from the lower intensity stuff. Anyway, I hope something that we've said here helps plan your aerobic capacity progression. So, bust us a thumbs up, because let me tell you something. Busting makes me feel good. Listen, John, I don't bring you on here to upstage me, you know. Try to steal all my subscribers. Last time you come on the next channel, mate. Oh, yeah, chat away in the comments, bay, and give me your experience on how you've improved your aerobic capacity. If you like my vibe, please subscribe. Real bugger. Start your own channel. And if you don't train, you're a physical dumbass. What? Well, okay, a train. Thank you.